Here is an incredibly simple and awesome way to create dependent dropdowns. I can select any category in this column. So for example, bytes and all the products in the bytes category will show up in the product column right next. You can use this technique with the regular data, data in tables. And even when you have three levels of dependencies. So here I can pick a category, relevant product and the size that I want. So in this video, let me explain how you can make this kind of a dependent dropdown in your Excel. Let's go. This technique relies on one of the most powerful new features of Excel, XLOOKUP. First, set up your data like this. Here I'm using some categories and products of our awesome chocolates. So categories go along the screen and products go down. If you have three levels, I'll talk about how to structure your data later on in the video. Next, select the category column and go to data, data validation, and from any value change to list. And the source need to be this row with all the categories. This bit is simple and you probably already know this. Now you should be able to select any one category. Depending on the category you select. So for example, if I select bytes here, I would like to see all these bytes products in this cell here. This is where that XLOOKUP functionality comes in handy. Let me first show it to you. If you go to your cell and type XLOOKUP, select bytes, select this row. So that's where the bytes is going to be looked up. And for the return value, if I just select this single row, I'm going to get the corresponding row from here for bytes. So it'll, it's going to return 50% dark bytes. Now notice what happens when I take out that and instead of a single row, if I give it a big range, when you hit enter, you're going to get all the bytes items. So all of these items will come up. We're also going to get a few zeros at the end. That's because in this range, we do have some blank values and those blank values will appear as zeros to my formula. We don't need to worry about these zeros for now. And if you don't select any category, so I'm going to go to the D5 cell and delete the values. My Excel cup is going to return an A error. This one is important to keep it in mind. So now let's go to the product column here, select the very first product and go to data validation from any value, select list and the source is equal to, and instead of pointing to any range on the screen, we are going to write that XLOOKUP formula. XLOOKUP, look up the D5 value. Now this one is important. You don't want to say $D$5 as we want the data validation to apply for all the cells in the range. You want to make this relative. So change this reference from $D$5 to just D5. You can either type it with your hand or while the reference is in the $D$5 style, press the F4 key three times to change the reference style. Then select the first row for your categories. This bit needs to be an absolute reference and this range for the return value. Close bracket and click OK. Now keep in mind that at this point, I have not picked any category. So my Excel cup comes back to an error. And when you click OK, you will get that same warning in the data validation as well. The source currently evaluates to an error. Do you want to continue? This is all good. So I'm going to say yes. And that's it. As of now, I don't have any products. But once I pick a category, so if I pick bytes, I'm going to see all my bytes products here. Notice that all of those zeros vanish and instead we'll get a single blank item at the bottom. This is not a problem and I can select a product. Now, how do you get the same validation rules applied all the way across? For this, select this cell, control C to copy and select all of these cells. Right click, go to paste special and from pasting everything all change to validation. This is going to paste only the validation rules. And now each of these cells will have its own dropdown. All of them will have blank values initially. But if you pick a category, for example, frozen here, I'm going to see all the frozen items in this list here. This technique is really powerful and it works not just with regular ranges, but even with data in tables. So here I have got the same data in tabular format. 
and I can pick a category like powders and I'll be seeing all the products within that category there. Even when you have data in table, your XLOOKUP looks same. And here is the best part. This technique works exactly same even when you have three levels, four levels or God forbid five levels. Let me show that to you. Here I have got a three level setup where I can pick a category like bytes, select a product in the bytes category and then select the corresponding product size. In order to get all of this work, you need to have another range of data set set up here. So here I have got all of that our first range looks exactly like this. As we do have quite a few products, I've set up the second range in a transposed fashion. That is products go down the screen and all the sizes go across the screen like this. Once you have all of this data here, the first two rules are simple. For this one, you go to data, data validation, and just point to the names of the main categories. For the second one, we use the XLOOKUP formula xlookup c4 which is a relative reference of the category cell and then select the row that has all the categories and the range that has the product names. For the third one we use same logic now we say xlookup d4 which is the product that you are going to select and then the product column so m19 to m50 look at this range here and the size values that go from n to q all of these values. And you are going to get the three level options here. You can use the same technique and extend it down to four levels or five levels. And it works just as beautifully. But one of the common problems with this kind of dependent dropdowns is stale data. So for example, here I have got powders and ready baked choco cake. What if I go back to the category and select a different option now? Maybe I change this to bytes. At this point, my spreadsheet automatically highlights that entire row indicating that there is some stale data here. And you can use conditional formatting feature of Excel to make these kind of things easily in your workbooks. Check out the video that shows up on the screen to learn a bit more about conditional formatting. I'll catch you there. Bye.